not good at catching. What? What? <laughs> Don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. <laughs> good morning, everyone. So very good to see all of you today. Thank you for choosing to come join us. The sunshine looks beautiful shining through the windows on the east side of the building. I hope that somehow we kept in our hearts from last Sunday's message from Philippians. I truly hope that we kept this in the forethought of our minds. Let the same mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. May we have kept his mindset as we went, out, went through our week and what we said and what we chose to do. I pray we always keep that in mind to let his light shine through us. I invite you, let's stand up this morning. Proclaim together all blessing and honor and glory are truly his in this place. Father God, we come before you today with joy in our hearts to worship you and to honor you. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters here today and those that are online watching, Father, that we as the body of Christ have the privilege, the honor of worshiping together. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may have a seat. Kids, down front, please. Okay, guys, do not go up on the platform. Just stay down here on this level. Stay down on this level, please. Hi, babe. 
Stay down on this level, please. Keep coming. Keep coming. Come on. Come on. Today. You know, when you're the last one, all eyes are upon you. The eyes of Texas are upon you. Oh, we got somebody else coming. Come on, Asher. Asher, 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 Asher. Hi, buddy. Hi, bud. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Ready? Good morning. All right. Couple of things. School starts tomorrow for some some kids. Okay. And other kids start on Wednesday. And other just all kinds of school start. Are you guys excited about school? Yeah. Well, let me tell you about my school. When I was in the third grade, I loved it so much, I stayed there three years. Do you believe me? Or am I just telling a story? I'm just telling a story. Hey, is, is, there, a, is there a little girl here named Adley? Yeah, this one. This one? Come here. Can I pick you up? Oh, boom. Is it your birthday? Yep. How old are you? Three? Thank you for the help. All right. We're, look at everybody say, I am three. 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 Did you catch that? I am three. Do you think they ought to sing happy birthday to you? Yep. Yep. Tell, say, Mr. Rick, would you please sing happy birthday to me? My name is Adley. Can you say that? Yep. Nope. Because you're three. Yep. Three. Yep. Three. 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 How old are you? Certainly will. Three. 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 She's, she's three. Trace, I got three. That. All right, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Adley. She's three, no matter how many fingers you hold up. Happy birthday to you. Yay! All right. I'm going to drop you. Are you ready? Uh -huh. I'm going to drop you. Count to three. One, two, three. <laughs> All right. Now, one other thing. One other thing. Richard, where, there you are. Richard Gibson is here today. And Richard has uh, had some health issues. And it's been a while since he's been able to be here. So uh, as we meet and greet, here's what, well, I got a couple announcements. Guys, are you just ready to go? But one other thing for you guys. <laughs> We're going to have a bowling party in... I got At your house? Whoa. No, we're going to have a bowling party at Franklin you Lane. Have a big house. Surprise, in, Mom and Dad. <laughs> hold up two fingers. In two weeks. In two weeks. August the 18th. 12 to 2 at Franklin Lanes. We're going to have and free food, free bowling, and everybody can make fun of me when I bowl. Does that sound like a winner? Yeah. All right, you guys can go. See ya. <laughs> Couple of announcements. I am thrilled. We're all thrilled that Richard is back with us. Uh, Richard was in St. Mary's. He was in rehab, two different rehabs, back to St. Mary's, back to rehab, and he finally got to go home. Amen, brother? Amen. Amen. Got to go home. Uh, so praise God, Richard is back with us today. Uh, where the Nolans go? Oh, there you are. Uh, there's a new Nolan in the world. Not you, but... Uh, Trent Nolan and his wife had a baby boy Thursday, Thursday, and they named their baby boy James after Grandpa Nolan. Isn't that awesome? So there's a new Nolan in the world, and a couple of, yeah, a couple, uh, couple other announcements in the back. There's a sign-up. Uh, we are looking for some volunteers to help with Monday night meals. 
Uh, it kind of follows the school calendar, so it's getting ready to start back up. Uh, we have three out of the four Mondays in the month covered, but the second Monday of the month, we are looking for somebody, group of people, that would like to cook the meal. Um, uh, it's a great outreach, and uh, so if you know of any, if you know of anybody, you anybody else, there's a sign up in the back. Also, um, Debbie West has been taking care of our communion. How many years, Debbie? <laughs> For a life. I'm in my 19th year, and Debbie's been doing it all 19 years that I've been the pastor. Uh, what that means is once a month, you prepare uh, the communion elements. Uh, Debbie is willing to share that joy with somebody else. So if you're interested, again, you can sign up. You can ask Debbie uh, what all that entails. Uh, it's just once a month you uh, get everything ready for communion. Uh, I mentioned bowling. I think that is it. Um, so as you meet and greet, uh, find your way to Richard and make sure you welcome Richard oh, and Janet. Sharon Tyson's trying to get your attention. You got to help me. <laughs> Yes. So spouse, mm -hmm. Amen. I agree. And uh, I, I was getting, I truly, I was getting ready, ready to mention Janet. Uh, welcome Richard and Janet back uh, after several months. And uh, also, uh, as you greet one another, uh, celebrate the fact that you're not the one having the baby. Right? Right? I mean, how many of y'all want another baby? Whoa. That's what I thought. All right, meet and greet. Ready, set, go.
worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God, still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet, we shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place, we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise, we were the beggars, now we're be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We were the beggars. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the There is joy in the house of the Lord here at St. James this morning. I pray we never take it for granted that we have the freedom and the privilege to come together as the body of Christ, standing side by side with one another, to lift up the name of our Lord. We cannot be quiet, knowing that at one point we were all beggars, but now we are truly royalty because of Jesus. We were all prisoners in our past, but now we we are running free because of Jesus. We have been forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. There are so many times in life and so many distractions in life situations that we forget that truth. We are forgiven, accepted, 
redeemed by his grace. That is why when we gather this morning, we lift our hearts up in praise to our Father. Father God, it's good to be in your house today with our brothers and sisters, standing side by side, lifting our voices, giving you all praise, glory, and honor because you truly deserve it. We thank you that we are forgiven and accepted. We have been redeemed because of what Jesus has done. And we know we can gather here this morning. There is only one reason we can stand here unashamed before you. And that is not because we are worthy, but it is all because of your mercy and your grace. There is no way we could earn that right, Father. But praise God, our debt has been paid by Jesus on the cross, and the tomb is empty. It is not because we are worthy. It is all because of your mercy and grace. May we tap into that each and every day. No matter where we struggle, we fall, we stumble, but we never fall beyond your reach, Lord. We thank you for that truth. All glory and honor and praise and blessing be yours in this house today, in each and every day in our hearts, in our souls, and our minds. May you be praised continuously in all that we say and that we do. We thank you, we love you, and all God's people said. Amen.
debt is paid. All because of his mercy. Amen. Life, you look out the window and it's just chaos, isn't it? It's hard to even turn the news on. But we know that our God is the God of the breakthrough. And we are breaking down. He is always working a way through, even though we may not see it, when there's not a way out. But there is one thing that we know and we can stand firmly upon, that he is still on his throne. Amen? So whatever we are feeling, we still have a reason to praise his name and lift his name on high.
I still have a reason to praise. Amen. 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 As we go to the Lord in prayer this day, uh, we do celebrate that Richard and Janet are able to be back with us again. Uh, a true praise for that. Uh, just praise God. Uh, uh, two funerals this past week. I ask your, your prayers for the family of Kim Abel. Um, Kim passed away, and I had the funeral on Tuesday. Uh, her husband, Daryl, was in church at the 9 o'clock service, and uh, a couple of people invited him over to the Sunday school class that's currently meeting, and Daryl decided to stick around for Sunday school. So, uh, But I do ask your prayers for Daryl and uh, three children, four grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren of Kim Abel. Also ask your prayers for the family of Don Utley. Uh, Don passed away this past week. The service was on Friday. Uh, Don was 91. I ask your prayers for his wife, Joanne, uh, their son, Greg, uh, and the rest of the family. Uh, j just ask that you lift that family up in prayers. Uh, Don... Uh, had a 36-year career in the EVSC. Uh, he was a principal at three different schools. Somebody came up Friday before the funeral, and they said, was he a principal at Cynthia Heights? I said, yes, he was. And, and this person said, I got called to the principal's office, and he paddled me. <laughs> I said, you probably deserved it. And they said, well, I probably did. Uh, Don was a great guy, just a super guy. Uh, so I ask your prayers for Joanne and Greg and the rest of the family. Uh, Tammy Ryder had surgery this past week. She is at Deaconess Midtown. I ask your prayers for Tammy. She is hoping to come home tomorrow. Uh, also ask your prayers today for Carolyn Troglar. Carolyn has had a difficult week. She is at West River and ask that uh, you continue to lift her up. Uh, she still has her sense of humor. Uh, I think it was Friday late afternoon, Susie and I were able to get by West River and, and see Carolyn after the funeral. And uh, even though Carolyn's had a very difficult week, she was able to still uh, kind of crack on me a little bit and had a smile because uh, she got me pretty good, and uh, so I praise God that she still has, has a great attitude. Um, uh, Lyndall Kelly is having surgery. Lyndall, you told me on Thursday, uh, ask your prayers for Lyndall as he goes into surgery. Uh, Jay Pipkin has surgery August the 21st up at IU Med Center. Ask your prayers for Jay. Uh, also ask you to ask your prayers for the family and I don't know the whole situation but there was a, a, a child, a student at Daniel Wirtz that passed away um, uh, certainly ask your prayers for that family and, that, and all of that community as, as they struggle to wrap their minds around a, a, a child being taken also ask your prayers uh, I just learned that uh, Terry Babb passed away on Friday. Uh, Terry and his wife Susie are longtime members of Simpson uh, Church. Uh, Terry had a major, major heart attack a few years ago. And uh, uh, ever since then, he, he kind of calls himself the miracle man. Uh, nobody, ex uh, the doctor, nobody expected him to survive that heart attack a few years ago, and uh, 
Just a few weeks ago, I officiated his brother Randy's funeral, and Terry uh, made the comment. He said, you know, he said, by all rights, I should have died before my brother. He said, but my brother went before I did, and uh, so I, I don't know any circumstances on the details on a funeral, but I certainly ask your prayers for the family of Terry Babb. Any other prayer concerns or praises today? Thank you. Let's pray. Oh, Father. Lord, we come before you today. And Father, I thank you for the words of, of this last song. No matter what I'm feeling, there is still reason to praise. Father, it, I know there are so many in our midst that are dealing with some difficult situations and circumstances. Oh, Father, I, kn I know sometimes people just get beaten down by the things in life. And yet, Father, no matter what we're feeling, there is still reason to praise. Father, I pray for healing for those that are that are either in the hospital or going into the hospital. Father, we thank you for those that have been healed and are in the process of being healed. Father, for those with broken spirits, oh, Lord, lift them up. Father, may they raise their eyes and worship and praise you. Father, we thank you and praise you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> I was sharing with someone earlier. Oh. So Ashley Vinhurst, her daughter died? Is that what you're telling me? Okay. Okay. Yes, Ashley Vin Vinhurst grew up in this church, and apparently her daughter was also killed. So, I was sharing with somebody earlier that uh, dealing with uh, some difficulties, grief, stress, that we, we all go through this. And God just kind of brought to my mind uh, the story of King David. A uh, man after God's own heart, anointed as a young boy to be the second king of Israel. And yet David was certainly acquainted with grief and sorrow. And when you read through the account of David's life, uh, he suffered the loss of a newborn son. David also had another son who killed another one of his sons. He had a son who raped one of his daughters. Uh, David was so acquainted with grief. And when you read through the book of Psalms, the majority of the book of Psalms is King David writing out his grief, his sorrow. And yet when you read through those Psalms, David is expressing his grief, his sorrow, his sadness, his feeling of being left and how awful things are. But almost every one of those psalms ends up with David praising God. He verbalizes his grief. But no matter what his feelings were, he still found reason to praise, and I, I praise God for that. Uh, today we're, we're going to talk about uh, something a little different, um, and I, I'll explain this. The, uh, uh, and I'm going to start off by telling a story on my grandson, Josh. Uh, Josh is going to be 10, I think, in a couple of weeks, and for some reason, for the last number of weeks and months and I don't know how long, the kid had decided to grow a mullet. And Grandpa was not happy. Let me tell you, I was not happy with that kid's hair. 
and I've talked to him repeatedly. I don't like your hair. I don't like your hair. Let me give you my haircut. I'll take you to my barber, and you'll get the same haircut I get. And Josh is like, no way. I, uh, he wanted nothing to do with it. And he liked that long mullet. It's awful. I did not like it at all. No matter what I said to him, the kid would not cut his hair. The other day, I got a picture. The kid got his hair cut. You know why? Nope, not school. Football. Football was getting ready to get started, and he was going to go get his equipment at Evansville Junior Football League and putting on that helmet, putting it on, taking it off. So he, to get ready for football, he cut his hair. Praise the Lord. <laughs> he wouldn't do it for Grandpa, but boy, he'd do it for football. This morning... And Johnny made the comment, Johnny West, wherever you are, Johnny. He said, well, I remember when you played football, you had long hair. Well, that was different. <laughs> <laughs> this morning, I, I, I want to talk about this. Christ is coming back. Period. Christ is coming back. Are you ready? Question mark. Christ is coming back. That's a fact. I, there, there's no question about it. Jesus Christ said, I am coming back. He said it well before Douglas MacArthur. He said it well before Arnold Schwarzenegger. Jesus Christ is coming back. All of the promises throughout the Bible they're always fulfilled. You, you can check. You can look at all of the promises and prophecies in the Old Testament. They have all been fulfilled. There is a 100% track record for the promises of God. And when Jesus Christ said, I am coming back, you can, there's, you can guarantee it. There's a 100% record of that. He is coming back, period. Now, we don't know when he's coming back. Jesus said he himself did not even know when he was coming back, only the Father. But there is no question that Jesus Christ is coming back, period. The question is, are we ready? Josh got his hair cut because of, to get ready for football. Are we ready for Jesus Christ coming back? Because he is coming back. I am not an expert on Revelation and all of uh, the prophecy teaching. I am not an expert on that. God has never opened up my mind to all of the prophecies and the teaching in the book of, other than the message to the churches, I've never preached out of Revelation. And there's a reason for that. Because when I preach, I believe 100% what I'm saying. And there, my mind just doesn't go to all of the prophetic teachings about the end times. I believe it, but I don't understand it well enough to teach it. And so I'm not, I don't want to teach something that is wrong. Now, I will tell you this. My understanding of the end times is real simple. There are three, four major events. The first is called the rapture, where Jesus Christ comes back with the spirits of all of his believers who have already died. Jesus Christ is going to come back. The dead in Christ, their physical bodies are going to come up out of the grave. And those that are still alive will meet Jesus in the air. That's called the rapture. And that's the first thing that, as I understand it, and I, I again, I say that with... Uh, an understanding that I'm not an expert. 
Jesus Christ is going to come back and those that are alive are going to meet him in the air. Oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be when my Jesus I shall see. That's a song I learned years ago in another church. I love that song. That's the rapture. Not everybody is going to be raptured up to be with Jesus. The Bible says that there will be one that will be taken and one that will be left. If you've read any of the books by Tim LaHaye, the Left Behind series, it talks about how at this rapture, there, there's, you and I will be sitting in church and one of us will go up and one of us will be left. There are times with my lack of vision when I don't know where Susie is in the house just the other day. Uh, she disappeared on me, and I, I'm like, where is she? And I said, oh, she's been raptured. And I'm left behind, and then she came around the corner. Well, the rapture didn't occur. But the question is, are you ready? Are you ready? Those that have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior... If you are alive when the rapture occurs, you will rise up and greet, meet him in the air. You'll be with Jesus. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to be left behind, period. After the rapture, there will be seven years of tribulation. And if you want to read about this, read the book of Revelation. It won't take you very long at all. Seven years of tribulation, and it's going to be horrible. At the end of that seven years, Jesus Christ is going to come back in glory, in power. And there will be the thousand-year reign of Christ upon this earth. And there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Now... If you have a different belief, praise God. I, I, I am not an expert on this. But the question is that every one of us has to face, are we ready? Are we ready? Because he is coming back. Those that are his, he's going to call home. Those people that are not his, he's going to say the worst words that anybody could ever hear. I don't know you. I don't know you. Those that are his are going to heaven. Those that are not his, he's going to say, I don't know you. He's not going to invite you into heaven if he doesn't know you. So the question is, are you ready? Are you ready? When I do a wedding, say it's a three o'clock wedding. Okay, girls, you know, are you ready? Are you ready? I go down, I, wherever the guys are, I check with the guys. Guys, are you ready? All right, here we go. It's time. It's time. And some would go, I'm not ready yet. Sorry, Charlie. It's time, baby. We're going. It's going to happen. Coaching football. I, I still, I still one of the funniest things. Uh, head coach said, bus leaves at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, bus is rode out of Rice High School. One of our assistant coaches came walking down the double dip. He was, he was two minutes late. Guess what? We just waved at him. With the, he was late. He wasn't ready. He missed the deadline. Sorry, Jay, find your own way. I don't know. You're on your own. And he's like, oh, uh, uh, buses went by, and we just waved at him. Sorry, Charlie. Are you going to be ready? That's the question. Let's look at John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Look at the first couple verses here in John chapter 14. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus had been teaching 
about the second coming. And the disciples were all bent out of shape about it. What, what's going to happen? How is it going to happen? How are we going to know? Je These are the words of Jesus in, in Matthew 14. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. The words of Jesus. He was telling the disciples, I'm going to leave this earth. I'm going to go up into heaven and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of dwelling place. I'm going to prepare a place for you. An elderly person one time said to me, I don't understand why I'm living so long. I'm ready. I've been ready. Why am I still here? And I said, Jesus isn't done with your condo. I said, think about how great a dwelling place you're going to have in heaven. I said, if you would have died early, you'd just get a one-room shack on the basement floor. I said, you must have a high-rise moving on up to the east side. No, not the east side. I was quoting George Jefferson. You're gonna, I said, you're going to have a beautiful place. The longer you are on this earth, the greater your place is going to be because Jesus is taking a little longer to fix it up. Think about that. That's what Jesus was telling the disciples. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Chill out, relax, don't worry. It's okay. I'm going to come back. And when I come back, I'm going to receive you. That's why I pray, Father, receive them into the arms of your mercy. Jesus said, I'm going to receive you. Now, he's speaking to his disciples. He's not speaking to the crowds. He's speaking to the disciples. So the question is, are you ready? And ladies and gentlemen, there are no excuses. Well, I thought maybe I had more time than fly. Well, you, Jesus, you just don't understand. When I was a kid, I had a bad Sunday school teacher. Doesn't apply. Well, you just don't understand Jesus. And Jesus goes, yeah, I do understand. I don't know you. Are you ready? The burning question, the, my, my, my heart all week long, I'm asking you, Directly, personally, right now, I'm asking you, are you ready? We don't know when he's coming back. When I graduated high school, shortly after I graduated high school, like that, sometime that summer, I went into the Kmart on St. Joe Avenue to tell you how long ago it was. And I ran into a guy that I had just graduated high school with. And he said, are you ready? I said, am I ready for what? He said, Jesus is coming back. I said, I know he is. He said, well, he's coming back September 21st. I said, really? When did he tell you that? He said, well, it's in the Bible. P.S., it's not in the Bible. He said, he's coming back September the 21st. He said, I'm getting ready. I said, how are you getting ready? He said, well, he said, I'm getting ready to sell my car. He said, I've been giving my clothes away. He said, I've given away almost all of my personal stuff. He said, I'm ready. I said, let me ask you a question. If Jesus is coming back and you're going to be raptured up into the sky, what does it matter if you gave your clothes away? 
He said, well, you got to be ready. I wish I would have seen him on September the 22nd of that year. We don't know when Jesus is coming back. And anybody that tells you they know the exact time that Jesus is coming back, <laughs> you can automatically write them off. Jesus said he didn't even know when he was coming back. Only the Father knew. But he is coming back. Are we going to be ready? In Matthew chapter 25, I'm, I'm going to ask that these verses just kind of scroll up on the screen. And, and I, I want to explain this. When Jesus told a parable, he used a modern analogy that the people would understand. In Matthew 25, he's telling the story of 10 people that have getting oil in their lamp for the bridegroom. When the bridegroom showed up, you had oil in your lamp and you would go out into the night and you would light the way for the bridegroom with, to meet his bride. Well, that was a custom of the time. Today, we have center point, our vectoran, our sigico, or whatever you want to call them. We don't use oil lamps like, so if Jesus was speaking today, he probably would not use this analogy. He would use a different, it would be the same truth, but a different analogy. But what he was saying here is, there's 10 guys ready to meet the bridegroom. Five of them are prepared. Five are not. And the bridegroom shows up, and the five that are not prepared are like, ah, I don't have oil in my lamp, what am I going to do? And they go to the five that are prepared and say, can you? And the, No, sorry, Charlie, you're on your own. Because when Christ comes back, we are on our own. One-on-one, -on -one, face to face with Jesus Christ. There's nobody else. Are you ready? If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you take your life and place your life, put your trust in Jesus, you're one of his. And Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. If you accept Jesus Christ, you're one of his. And when Christ comes back, you will join him in the air. Period. If you're not one of his. My heart's desire is for every one of you to place your trust in Jesus Christ. As we celebrate Holy Communion today, we have, again, the gluten-free, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, the gluten-free on my right, the individual servings on my left for those that are in need. On the night that he is betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And he blessed that bread. And he broke it. And he said, this is my body. Broken for you. Do this in remembrance. Likewise, he took the cup and he gave thanks over the cup. And he said, this is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if we're covered by the blood of Jesus, our sins are forgiven. I'm going to ask, and I, I, I have a, a moment of uh, confusion. Did I ask anybody to help with communion today? Yes, I did. Thank you, Kurt and Trina. I thought I did. Thank you. I, I had a moment of like, what did I do? The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for you. Trina? You're going to use the scissors. If our musicians will come forward, please.
Father God, I thank you for this day. Father, I thank you for the truth of your word. Father, I thank you that your son Jesus is coming back for his children. And Father, I pray the blessing of salvation upon each of my brothers and sisters today. Oh, Father, love on them today and draw them close to you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.